You're watching the National Health Channel. as a barrier to protect our body from the environment. It also regulates temperature and detects and fights off infections. Nerves in the skin let us feel things such as touch. The skin is one of the biggest and most complex organs of the body and contains hair follicles, oil glands, sweat glands, nerves and blood vessels. In this program we'll look at the latest research and development being undertaken to combat various skin disorders such as malignant melanoma and actinic keratosis. Melanoma, also called malignant melanoma, is a rare type of skin cancer. Melanoma is serious because the cancer can spread to other organs in the body. When cancer spreads, it's known as metastasis. Melanoma can start in an existing mole, but it can also develop in normal looking skin. Melanoma is relatively rare and makes up only 10% of all skin cancer cases. However, it's also responsible for most deaths due to skin cancer. Approximately 2,000 people die every year in England and Wales due to melanoma. The main cause of melanoma is believed to be overexposure to sun. Overusing sunbeds and sun lamps may also increase your risk of developing it. We now hear from Verisant Technology, a medical device company committed to developing innovative systems for the early detection of cancer. In the United Kingdom, melanoma rates have quadrupled over the past 30 years and now over 12,000 cases a year are diagnosed. Over 2,000 people are dying of melanoma every year in the United Kingdom. We feel that many of these deaths are preventable. If we can detect the melanomas earlier, we can save those lives and we can also save the healthcare system a tremendous amount of money. Verison Technology was incorporated in 2006 here in Canada. It's listed on the TSX Venture Exchange and it was incorporated in order to bring together a team of high level academic researchers corporate finance professionals and others in order to specifically target the early detection of cancer. The product called the Verisant Aura, developed by the British Columbia Cancer Agency and the University of British Columbia Department of Dermatology for the detection of skin cancer, including basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma which make up about 95% of skin cancers. These cancers, they can have a huge negative impact on the patient's life as well, because they can be disfiguring, especially if you have one on your head. You can have it on your nose, your ear, your lip, and the sooner it's detected, and the sooner that carcinoma is removed, the less scarring there's going to be. One of the great things about the Aura is that we have a very small probe tip. This allows physicians to examine lesions that are between the fingers and toes, in the contours of the ear, behind the ear, all of those places where you would need access with a small probe. Keep in mind, the Verisant Aura was developed by the British Columbia Cancer Agency, which is responsible for treating all of the cancers in British Columbia for the last 50 years. So this device comes out of a hospital environment. In 2011, the Verisant Aura received regulatory approval in Canada, Europe and Australia. The market for the Aura is large and growing, and over the next five years could include general practitioners, dermatologists, community health care facilities and hospitals on both sides of the Atlantic and in Australia. In Europe alone, there are 21,000 dermatologists and approximately 500,000 general practitioners. Members of the medical community recognize the importance of early detection of skin cancer and are willing to pay for effective, proven detection technologies that fit into or improve current procedures. Verisant has begun pre-marketing the Aura by exhibiting at leading dermatology conferences in key target markets. The company is currently selecting distributors and will first launch the Aura in Canada, 
Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Australia. The Verisant Aura will go into production and sales in the second half of 2012. Skin cancer is the most common type of cancer that occurs in, in people. One in seven people uh, is destined to develop skin cancer sometime during their life. If we're talking about someone, people over the age of 65, then one in two people, 50%, half of all people over the age of 65 will develop uh, some type of skin cancer. Now, skin cancer is um, treatable, very treatable if you can find it early because it's sitting there right on the surface and if you get it at an early stage uh, when it's relatively small then it's relatively simple to do surgery, cut it out and then the skin cancer is gone, that's the end of the story. However, if the skin cancer is not found at an early stage and it grows then the surgery becomes much more complicated and even worse, in the situation of something like melanoma, the, the most serious type of skin cancer, uh, there's a potential for the cancer to spread deeper into the tissue and worse than that, to other parts of the body. And that's when people may actually die from skin cancer. There really is a need for something more efficient, more accurate, so we can get uh, timely answers to patients in a efficient manner so that we can find the cancers that really need our attention, that really need our treatment uh, more accurately. The breakthrough with the Verisant Aura has to do with the fact that we're actually using light, just ordinary light, to examine the tissue, uh, but we're using a very specific part of the light that's reflected back from the tissue. It turns out that when we examine patients, you know, when patients, their families, individuals look at their skin and their doctors look at the skin, we're actually using light to make the diagnosis or to, to do that first detection phase. There's actually a lot more information that comes back from the skin that we don't see with our eyes, but using the right technology, if you find these very weak but very specific signals, it will tell you a lot about the tissue. And that's what we can do with the aura. The benefit is that we can use the aura to scan a spot on the skin that may be suspicious and depending on the signal we get back from the uh, device it will display a certain level of suspicion as to whether the spot is more or less worrisome and that extra information is really helpful to the practicing physician to guide them into making a decision for that uh, patient. The benefit of early detection uh, relates to the fact that it influences how we treat the patient. So if you can detect a cancer at an early stage, then generally that means that the cancer is small. And we know that for treatment, usually the uh, treatment approach is surgical. You, you cut out the cancer. So if you find it early when it's small, then generally that means that the area that you have to cut out, the, the size of the tumor that you have to cut out is small. And that means in turn that the scar is smaller, the disfigurement is less, uh, and that's obviously a, a real added plus for a patient. So early detection means you get treated faster, but early detection also should mean that the amount of surgery that you require, the amount of disfigurement that's gonna happen, the amount of scarring that's gonna occur is less, and that's a big plus for, for any patient with skin cancer, especially those with basal cell cancer and squamous cell cancer uh, carcinoma. And these are the most common cancers that are occurring in, in people. The Verisant Aura has been proven in a six-year clinical study at the Skin Care Center at Vancouver General Hospital. It was used to scan approximately 1,000 lesions, and the results have shown that the Aura had a very high sensitivity rate of 99% in accurately differentiating all major skin cancers from benign lesions. An earlier Australian study found that the clinical diagnosis of skin cancers and precancers was associated with a sensitivity of 33.8% for malignant melanoma. It's important to note that the results also show that the aura can reduce unnecessary biopsies by 50% to 100%.
we're very confident that this device is going to make a real difference and be a valuable tool for doctors in the early detection of cancer. We now hear from the Mathanwi Townsend Research Fund, a leading charity set up to raise funds for research into malignant melanoma. When my wife, my family, died from melanoma in 1999, we decided we were going to do something about it. So myself and our three sons, we set up a charity in her name to raise awareness, publicise the disease, and uh, to fund research to try and find a cure. She was diagnosed about 12 years earlier, and she'd been in remission for about 12 years. And then it recurred in the, uh, in the lymph nodes under the arm, uh, in the womb and in the brain, and after that, it was four months before she died. We decided that the emblem would be the sweet pea because that was her favourite flower. And we've actually got a sweet pea named Mavanwi Townsend, which we uh, sell. And uh, lots of other promotions like the ultraviolet bracelets. But she'd spent her life working for others, and now we decided it was about time that somebody worked for her. Melanoma is one of our best kept secrets. And uh, it is little known by the man in the street and we've really got to get this message over. So the message really is that if you have a mole that's changing in any way, if it's going black, irregular outlines, go to see the doctor now, not tomorrow, now, and you might just have changed, saved your life. Melanoma hit my family, uh, myself, when I was 40 years old, I had a melanoma removed. No one told us at that stage that it could be a genetic or it could be hereditary. Nobody mentioned the fact that my mum had ginger hair and that might be an important factor. So I didn't worry too much. I had all the lymph glands tested and so on. When our eldest daughter was 27, she showed me a mole on the top of her leg. I immediately sensed that that was melanoma. Please go quickly and have this sorted. And I thought, well, the good thing is, I don't think you've been sunburned. Oh, I was, Dad. And she said, when I was 16, I was windsurfing in Brittany and I got very bad sunburn on that spot. Alarm bells rang. I don't think she was dealt with particularly quickly but the mole was eventually removed and we thought all was well. But six years later, she collapsed with brain tumours and was given two months to live. She was very feisty, our daughter, and said, hmm, no, I shall live longer than that. And she promised to take the surgeon out for a meal in two years' time. She almost made it. <laughs> she was a few weeks short. So since then, we felt that we ought to carry her spirit forward. She was teaching when she died, and her little class of five-year-olds desperately wanted to do something to help. So they made a film on sun safety. And this film was then distributed throughout the whole of the Southwest to every school. And it's through that that we met Harry Townsend, through that that we work with dermatology at, in Cornwall and we set up the melanoma project here and acted as a catalyst. And now we've got this magnificent educational unit on the road. We would desperately like a clinical input. We would like to have what you have in Australia where lay people in fact can train to spot moles going wrong. Because this is, melanoma is growing at such an alarming rate and it's so preventable, so easy to prevent it. Just don't burn and then check your skin. And if you do have a mole that's dodgy, please go and see somebody about it. The message is so simple and that's what we're trying to do. Melanoma appears as a mole or freckle on your skin. Um, generally speaking, all moles and freckles should have a clean, crisp edge, which shouldn't be blurry or ragged around the edge. They should be symmetrical, um, on both sides being exactly the same. They should be one colour. 
If you have any moles which are changing in colour, so they can be two-tone, three-tone, um, or they can change from light to dark or dark to light, please go and see your GP straight away. Basal cell carcinoma is a non-melanoma skin cancer. Basically, it's seen as a, a pale red lump on the skin. Um, it's pearly in colour, um, it can be red. It can also be seen as a slight dry um, sort of scaly patch, almost looks like an eczema patch. So if you have anything like that that hasn't healed up within a month or so, please go to your GP and get it checked out. Um, basal cell carcinomas are more common um, in men and they grow over a long period of time. They're also very common in the elderly sort of age group and then um, they sort of build up over a period of years. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma is a non-melanoma skin cancer. It's the second most common type of skin cancer. Um, again, it's more common in men and the elderly. It's the second most common in men. Um, in terms of appearance, it's crusty, ulcerated. It's very common sort of in terms of bleeding and things like that. In terms of protection from the sun, we recommend a hat. Um, you can get different styles of hats. Legionnaire styles of hats are fantastic because they provide protection to the back of your neck and also to your ears. Broad-rimmed hats, again, provide a wide amount of shade to your face. If you do wear a cap, we also recommend that you wear some sort of other protection, for example, sun cream on the back of your neck or the tops of your ears, because these are prone to getting burnt. Sunscreen can also be used as protection. Um, it's quite readily available in most shops. Uh, factor 15 is the minimum that we recommend, and this blocks out 92% of UVB rays. A factor 30 blocks out about 96% of UVB rays. We recommend that people with children, uh, fair hair, auburn hair, or people that burn quite easily wear a factor 30 plus, and then um, adults about a factor 15 minimum. Peak times from 11 o'clock till 3 o'clock during the day, so make sure that you apply your sun cream every two hours during peak times. So 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock to ensure you're protected. In terms of sunglasses, try and get one that's got a British kite mark or UV protection on them, and also the ones which wrap around the eyes to provide maximum protection. Clothing ideally should be dark in colour. Anything black or dark blue provides maximum protection. Lighter, looser clothing is best, and anything that's got a tight weave. So if you hold it up to the window before you go out and you can't see through it, it provides maximum protection. If you are outside and you feel like you're still burning, so your sun cream's not working, or your clothing is still feeling hot, the best thing to do is actually seek some shade. Shade can actually block out 75% of the UV rays. We as a charity want to increase the profile of this disease and we want to emphasise research and also to emphasise early diagnosis because early diagnosis is the best way that you can find a cure. We've got lots of supporters who are working hard to fund our research but we need more and we need more publicity to increase awareness. Actinic keratosis, also known as AK, is caused by long-term exposure of skin to ultraviolet rays contained in the sunlight. It's a very common condition in fair-skinned people, particularly over the age of 50. It appears as single or multiple skin patches, which are reddish, rough and scaly. It's common to have this on the areas of the skin which are usually exposed to the sun, such as the face, ears, scalp, back of hands and lower leg. But it can occur on any part of the body. Actinic keratosis is not a skin cancer, but in a small number of cases it can develop into one, so it's advisable to have a medical opinion. Various treatment options are available, such as creams, freezing, surgery or exposure to special light, a treatment called photodynamic therapy. We now hear from Photonamic, an organisation who have developed an innovative self-adhesive patch containing amino levolonic acid for the photodynamic treatment of actinic keratosis. Photonamic is a small pharmaceutical research oriented company with focus on photosensitizers for the treatment of um, diseases like oncology or dermatology and as well for fluorescence guided diagnosis. The molecules we develop are in this indication fields and our major focus is currently a molecule called amino levolinic acid. The small team of Photonamic uh, was put together about 10 years ago when we started our development. 
We currently have two products based on this molecule, but we also look into other photosensitizers in order to enter into other indications as well. At present, our major product is in skin diseases and focused on the treatment of actinic keratosis, which is a severe precancerous skin lesion. It is a ready-to-use patch, which we developed uh, during the course of our existence, and we are very happy that this is currently in registration in several countries and will be available soon. Photodynamic therapy, or PDT, is a treatment that is used mainly for the treatment of superficial skin cancers and precancers. It makes use of a topically applied light sensitizing agent that is uh, absorbed into the skin cancer growth. Usually it's covered from light for a period of three to four hours and then that cover is removed and then uh, intense light, usually red light, is used to activate what is this photodynamic reaction that makes use of available tissue oxygen to produce this photo chemical reaction that selectively destroys the skin cancer cells. Now, photodynamic therapy has been investigated for uh, potential use in internal cancers using injected photosensitizers. But uh, when we focus on skin cancers, we have the ease of delivery, of not only of the light sensitizing drug in cream form, but with the ease of delivery also of the light onto the skin. Initially with photodynamic therapy we were making use of complex laser lights to uh, activate the photodynamic reaction. We don't need that and uh, high intensity red LED lights, light emitting diode uh, sources are now in uh, widespread use and uh, allow for uh, simplification of the photodynamic reaction. PDT delivers a relatively specific and uh, localised treatment courtesy of the preferential uptake of the photosensitizer by the more rapidly cycling cancer and precancer cells and also by the interval uh, when we undertake treatment there is preferential accumulation of the photosensitizer in the skin cancer compared to the surrounding normal cells. The Alacare aminolevulinic acid is the prodrug that we use in photodynamic therapy. Now, aminolevulinic acid is a chemical that's actually present in most of the living cells in our body, and we make use of an excess accumulation of this chemical to produce the photosensitizer selectively within the tumor and precancerous cells to produce the photodynamic reaction. Now, the photodynamic reaction makes use of available tissue oxygen, this accumulated photosensitizer, and makes use of the intense red light to uh, stimulate this reaction, which essentially is a phototoxic reaction, but we're making good use of this reaction to destroy uh, cancer and precancerous cells. And within the Alacare medicated plaster, this 5-amidolevulinic uh, acid has been specially formulated to be carefully released onto the surface of skin cancers and precancers to accumulate within these uh, growths over a period of uh, four hours. And when the plaster is removed and the light shone onto the lesions, then we can uh, initiate this photodynamic reaction and destroy the skin cancer growths. Spirit Pharma Limited is a Swiss-based pharmaceutical company with more than 60 years of experience in research, development, manufacturing, marketing and distribution of cosmetic and dermatological products. In Switzerland and our seven subsidiaries, we employ 450 people. And we do also have a very strong network of uh, partners all over the world. At our research and development uh, site in Egerkingen, where we also manufacture our products, 300 colleagues are driving innovation for skin and health. So we can offer excellent products and outstanding services, mainly for the dermatologists, but also for the general practitioners, pediatricians and pharmacists alike. According to our strategy, uh, we focus on three main topics. First is sun protection, second is non-melanoma skin cancer, and third is dry and sensitive skin. Daylong is our well-known brand for sun protection and Exipial is the same for dry skin. With both brands we are very successful all over our markets, especially in Switzerland where we are leaders in these segments. 
working together with Photonamics has been a fruitful cooperation from the very beginning. From the first meeting uh, to the successful signing of the licensing agreement with Alacare Patch, it took only five months to complete. And this is really very quick. And this was only possible because both companies work together like true partners. With our product, Delong Actinica, we have already been active in the prevent of non-melanoma skin cancer. Now, with the acquisition of the rights for Alacare Patch, we have an effective product also for the treatment of actinic keratosis and therefore offering us a real unique therapeutic concept. So we can prevent and treat the actinic keratosis, which is really uh, something special for one single company. We are very happy that we can strengthen now our strategic position uh, in the non-melanoma skin cancer market with this acquisition of uh, Alacare patch. Launch in our most interesting market in Germany is just about to happen and we receive already a lot of positive feedbacks from our customers anticipating the introduction of Alacare patch in Germany. Sun protection factor or SPF is a measure of the relative protection that a product will give us from the ultraviolet B rays from the sun, an important aspect in promoting not only sunburn but skin cancer. If we go out in the sun for 15 to 20 minutes we can begin to burn and that time is shorter if we have particularly fair skin or if we're at high altitude or near the equator. So whether we be men, women or children, we're all at risk of sunburn. It's important that we try to protect ourselves from the uh, intense rays of the sun. And a sunscreen protection factor of 25 can provide us protection for between five and six hours. But that's important. Uh, what is important is that it's appropriately applied and it therefore needs to be a product that cosmetically is acceptable. It's important that we don't just focus on UVB protection either. UVA also uh, is in the sun's rays and that can promote skin cancer development as well. So we're very much focused now with sunscreens on products that have high value uh, protection from uh, ultraviolet B and ultraviolet A. Now the, the day long range uh, has satisfied the very rigorous standards required to uh, satisfy high protection from ultraviolet B radiation as well as ultraviolet A. In addition to that they've focused on developing products that are highly cosmetically acceptable and therefore uh, are more likely to be used. And they have shown studies that uh, use of sunscreen will help delay and prevent the development of actinic keratosis so that we know that they are effective products. As a skin cancer doctor, I'm particularly enthusiastic that we have a company now that is supporting through the Alacare Plaster development the, uh, the wider use and simplification of a highly effective treatment photodynamic therapy for skin cancer, as well as focusing on the importance of prevention of skin cancer development and prevention of actinic keratosis through the use of sunscreens. Photodynamic will remain focusing on molecules like amino acid and with Alacare we have done a development which is a treatment option for actinic keratosis. We partner with companies to bring this to the market because as a development company we are not focused on marketing and sales. In future we will work on other photosensitizers to further develop targeted approaches in this field. We hope this programme has gone some way in detailing how technologically advanced medical innovations are helping in the treatment of patients with skin conditions such as malignant melanoma and actinic keratosis. I'm Georgina Burnett and you've been watching Skin Deep in the NHS, Innovations in Skin Care. You're watching the National Health Channel.